I have been in C++ hell. It all started off when I think everything was going to be easy. I thought, I've got access to the console, I've got access to strings, everything's going to be hunky-dory. C++ is basically just slightly more difficult Python. I was very, very wrong. The first time I saw something was a mess was when I realized that I was going to be injecting into another process to get all of this stuff to work. Now, that doesn't sound like it's really all that difficult initially, but it immediately means that I'm no longer able to debug things the same way. You see, when you're running things as a linear program, within Visual Studio you can set breakpoints and you can debug it within the debugger and view the internals of all of your local variables and all kinds of incredibly useful stuff. When you inject into another process, Visual Studio no longer knows about that new thread within the new process. So you're kind of blind from the debugger's perspective, which means you get to open everything within a debugger like x64 debug. Now, this is what things look like with x64 debug. Everything is significantly more complex. It's all an assembly. And as soon as I actually inject something, I can show you what that looks like here. I start my Flask C2 up here. I run back over to x64 debug, making sure that everything is running correctly. And then I go back and run my malware. So as we can see, it is injected successfully. And if we go back over to x64 debug, we can see down here at the very, very bottom in tiny, tiny letters that a new thread has been created. Now in order to debug this, Luckily, I've got a box right here that has paused the actual execution after the thread has started so that I can go over it within my debugger to threads, look at 5A54, go to the entry point, and then for whatever reason, make another hop here. And finally land at the actual entry point of my injected thread. This became an absolute pain in the ass. So much of a pain in the ass that I created a standalone version to basically copy and paste all of the code that is injected into the other thread to debug. That is when I ran into my second set of problems. <laughs> That second set of problems was that essentially some things just broke whenever you injected them into other processes. This includes the always important strings library. The C++ and C strings library as libraries essentially makes it incredibly easy for you to build dynamic strings in C and C++. In any other language like Python, this is kind of like trivial but within C and C++, it is not. In order to actually create a string within C and C++ without the strings library, you have to have a fixed length in order to create a character array, and then you've got to, you know, you could potentially create one using character pointers, but there are additional kind of difficulties with that. There's a whole lot going on there. For whatever reason, you cannot inject the strings library or use the strings library within injected code. I have no idea why. If anybody wants to tell me why, feel free to. I would, I would really appreciate it because it absolutely makes no sense to me. But essentially, you lose the ability to use the strings library. It basically just causes the program to just yeet off into some random memory address and give you an access violation. It's something that I debugged for 72 hours and couldn't figure out, so I'm not going to really bother trying to like do it any further than that just to get this video out. There's, there's just no point. <sighs> so, the code is injected. What does it do? Well, if we go back to our C2 page right before I restart our malware, let me open up our C2. So here's our C2 right here. I guess you kind of get an example of you know what it looks like here we can go ahead and restart our malware. Let me press OK. 
and we get a basic JSON message. Now this is how Flask is parsing it. I can actually exit and create a listener using Netcat. Shout out to the OSCP for teaching me this trick. LNVP 5555. Now we've got a secondary kind of C2 listener going on here and we can run it again. So it's injected here, it's run there, and we can see the raw post request it's sending. It took me the better part of 48 hours to figure out how to create this absolute monstrosity of a function just to send a post request, something that literally is one line within Python, one line with the request library was literally like 48 hours of messing around with memory addresses, trying to figure out why strings wasn't working. It's, it's a disaster, but it finally does work. And I can change, you know, the actual message itself. If I look down here somewhere, I can change this to say, check in, I should have learned Rust. So if we save that, rerun it, it's injected and we look back, well, we didn't restart our C2. That also happened a lot. So let's restart our C2, run it again, and go back to our C2 and we see that we have our new message. Now, for whatever reason, I can't just create a new like member of this JSON blob. Don't know why, was trying to debug it before I recorded this video, not gonna bother. So the basic breakdown is this. I've got a piece of malware that injects a function into a process. That function then calls the check-in method, which is basically just a simplified wrapper around the send method. The send method creates a custom post request completely raw using the create message method. That create message method is what actually puts all of the strings or character arrays together, constructs them into a post request, and uses the Winsocks library to send it all on. There is absolutely no encryption. There is absolutely no C2-like actual response. Right now, it is as simple as this. The C2 itself, unbelievably simple. Just a very simple Flask library that I need to restart before I forget again. A very simple Flask library that looks like this. It is one route and just prints the data out to the screen and sends success back. It doesn't do anything more complicated than that. It will eventually, but right now it is incredibly simple. I just basically needed something to confirm, yes, you are in fact able to, you know, communicate with the C2. So all of this uses the Winsox library something that I really thought was going to be way more complicated, but it's not. I've got it all commented out. I understand every bit of it for the first time in my life, even though I've written in it several times. It all makes sense. The complicated part was the fact that I didn't have access to strings, so I had to create, for example, an entire new method just to convert an integer over to a string, something that is more complicated than you expect, despite it being something that I probably learned in college. So this into string function, fairly simple. It, it does exactly what it sounds like, and thus far it works. Probably won't for everything, but it works for right now. And the reason why I had to do that is that I discovered that a post request, when it has an application slash JSON content type, you actually have to give an accurate uh, content length field. So you can't just like put some random number in there and just hope that it works. I really wish you could, because that actually took me hours today. So it constructs the JSON, throws it all together, and you're golden. This is a slightly different kind of form of this devlog. It's like an actual devlog instead of just a, you know, here's a deep dive into some, you know, weird thing that I did with the malware, like, you know, the last process injection one. If you enjoy this one more, it, it honestly takes less time to actually put together, um, but if you would rather me go back to the deep dives, I will. I just noticed that most people weren't actually watching for 30 minutes, so why make a 30-minute video? Thank you, everybody, for actually supporting the series. It's been awesome. Feel free to leave me a like and subscribe if you like the content. It kind of lets YouTube know that this is something that people like. Take it easy. Peace.